get into their heads and their thoughts and to really un uh, understand what they're thinking about and where they want to go and what did they even think about the space aspect of the program. Uh, it was it was really just an organic uh, process of, of like sort of gaining um, respect and trust for one another. And I treated them like adults more than anything. I think that helped too. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, having having cameras pretty much much in the in the classroom or whatever they're they're doing their stuff. I mean, did they get used to it and the fact that it was just basically, you know, something in the background that they didn't have to worry about or anything like that? Did it take a little time for them to kind of uh, kind of figure that out? Yeah, I think uh, the first day they were very kind of aware of it and it was a little fun for them. They'd often look at the camera and just laugh and smile and, you know, but I'd say it really didn't take very much time uh, for them to just kind of forget about us and not really care that, uh, that we were there. And, um, you know, I think that also had to do with the fact that they had a mission <laughs> that they were trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, they're, they're sponges. They, they kind of like take, you know, they see what's happening and then they just run with it. And I think that, uh, that aspect of, of them being so young and, and just curious allowed us to, to kind of be there and, sort of stay out of the way as much as possible. We used a lot of um, long lenses and small cameras as well. So we weren't really in their faces as much as it may appear <laughs> in, the, in the film, because uh, it is very intimately told. Uh, about how many, uh, about how, how long did it take to, to shoot the uh, documentary? Uh, it took basically the summer, uh, like, you know, it, the, the program was five weeks. The major part of it was five weeks. And then the uh, the finals uh, were a little bit separate, and I also shot with all the so I'd say it was probably like 15 days total of shooting, uh, but then the edit took a long time uh, because it's you know that was the part of it that was you know my passion project trying to find the time to to make this film you know in between projects and and you know COVID uh, was sort of a a silver lining for me in, in, in that sense, because everything shut down and I had plenty of time to finally finish the film that I had set out to make again. Because I know there's, you know, always a ton of footage you have to kind of go through and, uh, you know, kind of pick where you want to, uh, you know, where you were, what, what lines you want to use, what kind of, uh, you know, what are kind of the stories you want to tell as well too. So it does take a little bit, bit of a while, you know, it's not like you have a script in front of you saying, which direction you're going to be. It's a, a situation where you have to listen to the interviews and kind of organically kind of, you know, kind of weave that story. So I understand. I yeah, understand yeah absolutely. Stuff. You're a writer as an editor, basically on a documentary. Um, you know, you're, you're taking what you have in the can and, and finding the story within the material that you've captured. And also it being a documentary, it unfolds in front of you. <laughs> so it's, 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 uh, it's a completely fascinating organic, uh, process. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've done a couple documentaries myself, so I know your pain. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, going through all going through all that footage and, and you know trying to, to derive out a story a little bit. So yeah, I understand that as well. Um, I mean, you know, we got all these festivals coming up. Hopefully, we'll we'll find some kind of distribution so we could maybe see this on a, on a streaming platform at some point. But um, but for everybody else, I mean. You guys can, uh, you know, I believe the Boston one's going to be virtual, so you at least be able to see that there as well. Um, zero gravity, zero gravity doc.com. You guys can check out where you're going to be able to see it as well. Um, and all the social media, I believe, is on that website as well, right? Yeah, zero gravity doc is our Instagram, Facebook, tw Twitter, all, all of our socials is the same. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to say thanks again for uh, you know having me to um, and talking about about this little film. I really appreciate the uh, you know the just your conversation and interest and and um, you know this was a really inspiring project for me as well. Um, you know, and I think that that it shows in the film <laughs> too. And uh, I hope that people you know come and see it and and share it with their their, uh, their kids, their students, you know, it has a lot of educational value as well. And uh, that's one of the missions for us at the end of all this is to make sure that, that it's affecting the, the uh, you know, middle school kids that are going to be taking us into the future. So, um, so thank you again. 
Uh, no problem at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm really inspired that, you know, a lot of these, like I said, a lot of these kids are starting to learn to code um, as early as middle school, because that's going to be, that's the future of the, um, you know, basically the future is uh, to be ability to code. We're, we're already kind of like right now looking for people to code in order to, in order to get everything kind of finished. So I yeah. think that's the future, obviously. So it's great to, to be able to see we're preparing for that as well. Thanks a lot for joining us. And hopefully we'll talk again soon, maybe when you have another project going on. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. You guys can check us out on social media at SWIV, at SWIV on Twitter, somewhere in Vegas on Facebook, and at SWIV Podcast on Instagram. You guys can check out episodes over on our home, Spreaker.com. Also, you guys can check it out on all your local podcast catchers. Just make sure to subscribe. And you can also ask Alexa to please play Somewhere in Vegas for the latest episodes. We'll be back next time with another episode of Somewhere in Vegas.